Palm oil is one of our nation's leading industries. Malaysia contributes to more than 50% of the world's palm oil, which is approximately 13.6 million tons. That is a lot of palm oil. Hence, the palm oil industry alone rakes in much revenue and much needed employment opportunities and foreign currencies. Such high levels of demand of Malaysian palm oil may be due to the high quality of palm oil that is produced here, although it should be noted that the palm oil did not come from our own soil. The palm oil was brought here from the African continent. Our subject for today is the palm oil industry and how it is processed and managed. With respect to the practicality needed to make this subject matter interesting, you are cordially invited to join us in this journey of discovering palm oil. Our first stop is Kerry Island, one of Golden Hope Plantation Burhard's oil palm plantations. Golden Hope has been in this industry for more than 169 years, which makes them one of the pioneers of this industry. Look at that scenic view Cary Island offers our inquisitive minds. This plantation field is as big as 5,000 hectares. Palm oil is a unique fruit that has many uses. Through all of these processing stages that you will see subsequently, it will be evident to you how useful this crop is. Structure of the palm oil fruitlets or loose fruit. As you must already know by now, the palm oil is derived from the palm oil fruit. Is it not a wonder how oil can be the product of a fruit? Since this is of much interest to me particularly, Inches Sharul, the field manager of 93C1, will demonstrate to us the structure of this oil-bearing fruit. But before we dissect this palm oil fruit, let us get familiarized with some of the jargons that are used with respect to palm oil. First of all, the loose fruit, the term that was used before, are also called fruitlets. And the fruitlets cling to the bunch. Each bunch has approximately 1,500 fruitlets. Now, the structure of the fruitlets. Inche Sharul has gone way ahead of us and dissected a few fruitlets all by himself. Look closely. The fruitlets are made out of three layers. The outermost layer is known as the mesocarp, the thickest and the red layer. Inside the mesocarp is a layer which is known as the shell. Although it is a thin layer, it acts as a protection to the kernel. The kernel is the last and innermost layer which is white in color. Although there are three layers to a fruitlet, only two of the layers bear oil. Only the mesocarp and kernel. And the mesocarp is the bigger contributor of oil. How long does it take to grow this magnificent crop? That question crossed my mind too. So, in Cheshiro, how long does it take to nurture the trees to get these fruitlets? Actually, the crop can have a start from the 22 months, but from uh, 22 to 30, 30 months, the, 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 the fruit is not uniformly setting up. So, we counter the maturity stage from the 36 month. Theoretically, it takes somewhere between 22 to 36 months to grow the oil-bearing fruitlets. After 36 months, the fruitlets will grow into even sizes and bear the most oil. But that is just in theory. In real practice, we will harvest the bunches of a palm oil tree when some of the fruitlets fall to the ground. It is an indicator that the fruitlets are mature enough to be harvested. Now how do we harvest the bunches? Good question. The people that is in charge of the harvesting the bunches are called harvesters. Unlike the fruitlets, the bunches will not fall to the ground when it is mature. So the harvester will need to cut the corn below the bunches first.
When the bunches drop, the harvester will take the bunches and put them all in the center of the path. But before that, the stalk of the bunches will be cut as short as possible and numbered. The bunches or crops that were harvested will then be taken away to be further processed via the motor cart. The loose fruits will be collected and put into the G-bag. This looks like a green net. The G-bag is known as such because it is meant for the green fruitlets. The harvested bunches will be collected by a lorry, which will compile all of the other harvested bunches to be brought to the mill to be processed further. We will see the processes that the bunches will go through and the product of these processes will be evident later. Earlier, Incheshurul has briefed and illustrated practically how the oil-bearing fruits are harvested and brought to the mill. Here, at the mill, Here we will be assisted by Che Lina, the engineer, whose task is to make sure the operation of this mill runs as smooth as possible. Here, the bunches will go through four means of processing stages. First of all, the bunches from the lorries will be brought to the reception area, where the bunches are compiled and await the next process, which is the process of sterilization. The next stage will be the separation stage. In this stage, the fruitlets will be separated from the bunches and the mesocarp. This stage will be known later as the threshing stage. The third stage will be the extraction and purification of oil. In this stage, the mesocarp and the kernels will go through the clarifier, the purifier and the vacuum dryer. This stage is also very crucial because the quality of the oil that is produced is very much dependent on how the oil is extracted and purified so as to get rid of the impurities and etc. In the fourth stage of the process, kernels will be recovered to be dispatched elsewhere for other users. In this stage, we will bear witness to the many uses of the palm oil, exceeding the production of oil. Welcome to the Golden Hawk Plantation East Mill. I am Chitlina. As the engineer of this mill, I will walk you through the processing stages the palm oil fruit will go through to produce the finished products that you see in the market. We are now at the reception area. This is the first place that the palm oil bunches will be compiled. As you can see, the fresh fruit bunches, or also known as the FFB, which was freshly harvested will be brought here by lorries. From the reception area, the bunches will be loaded into buggies. The bunches will then be sterilized. This will be done at the sterilization area. The FFB from the ram will be loaded into the cages and the train will carry the cages into the sterilization area. The cages will be put into buggies in a lineup manner, after which the cages will be sent to the sterilization station to be sterilized.
This process takes approximately 18 minutes and the pressure of the steam that the bunches will be exposed to is 42 PSI. After the completion of this stage, the cages with the sterilized FFB will be sent to the threshing station via the train. The threshing station is the place where the threshing ground is situated. Here, the bunches will be separated from the fruitlets and then discarded. This is the threshing drum. Here is where the separation takes place. In the drum, the fruitlets and the bunch is separated. The fruits will be sent to the conveyor below the treasure drum and the bunches will be piled in the front part of the treasure drum which is called the dumping area. The fruitlets that are now separated from the bunch will be brought to the digester. The digester will infuse the fruitlets with continuous heat, which will further separate the mesocarp from its kernel. Doing so enables crude oil to be extracted from the mesocarp. The next stage will therefore be the clarification and purification of the crude oil extracted from the mesocarp. The oil that was extracted from the mesocarp via the use of the screw press is transported to the vibrating screen. The vibrating screen will screen the crude oil from any foreign materials. Only oil is allowed to pass through the screen and the foreign materials will be rid of. The next stage will bring us to the clarifier, purifier and vacuum dryer. The oil that was extracted from the mesocarp and screened for foreign materials are sent to the clarifier tank. Oil from the clarifier tank is then tapped into the purifier to remove dirt and moisture. After which, the oil will be dried further in the vacuum dryer to make sure that there is absolutely no moisture left in the oil. The cleaned and dried out oil is now ready for dispatch. The press kits from the pressing station is conveyed to the depericarper where the kernels will be separated from the fibre of the mesocarp. The fibre which is obtained from the completion of this process is sent to the boiler as fuel to generate steam for processing other parts of the process. The fibre will be put into the furnace in which it will be heated, hence generating steam. The kernels or nuts that have been separated in the deep hairy couple will be sent to the nut polishing drum to prepare the kernel for the subsequent process. The next stage that the kernel will go through is the process called the nut cracker. This is the process in which the nut or kernel and the shell will be separated. In order to segregate the shell and the kernel or the nut, both shell and the kernel will go through the winoa. In the winoa, the separation between the shell and kernel will be done through the flotation of the shell, it being the lighter particle as compared to the kernel. The shell will be stored above and will be sent to the boiler as fuel just like the fibre from the mesocarp. Meanwhile, the kernel will be sent to the kernel filing for storage. From this point onwards, kernel oil will be extracted. Now that we have seen all of the stages that the oil palm goes through to produce palm oil, let us turn to a less technical look at palm oil.
palm oil is used as the base of many products, that is, apart from being used as cooking oil in Malaysian cooking. Majority of the uses of palm oil are for the production of foodstuffs. It is fair to say that approximately 80% of palm oil is used for the food industry, the remaining being used for other non-food related applications. Do you know that most of the food products that you see on the shelves of the sundry shops and such are somehow or rather related to palm oil? That is, it is a byproduct of the palm oil. Cooking oil, as I have mentioned before, is a product of palm oil. The margarine is another example. Condensed milk too is a product of palm oil. Even chocolate and ice cream are derived from palm oil. Examples of non-food related products that are the products of palm oil are soap, candles, printing inks and skincare products. Researches that are done contribute to the findings of the users of palm oil. One of the latest findings being the ability of the concoction of palm oil and diesel to be used as fuel for motor vehicles. This concoction is known as biodiesel. Biodiesel is a solution to the problems that the world will face, that is, the shortage of the supply of petroleum. All of the uses of the palm oil is derived from the constant research that is done by R&D. Researches of the palm oil are not only done by companies that are in the industry such as Golden Hope and Sun Derby. The Malaysian Palm Oil Board, also known as MPOB, carries out research and development. Among the areas that are currently looked at are issues such as disease control, mechanization, integrated pest management and recycling of waste. In a nutshell, the palm oil is a very useful crop. In due time, R&D will find out new ways in which the oil palm will be able to contribute to mankind.